award-winning Ball Game Blitz Sports Network from Worthy Road Studios. Over 750,000 views in 2023. We're where you need to advertise. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and join over 4,500 subscribers watching local sports. The Jackson Rockabillies, Union University, Bethel, USJ, TCA, Jackson Christian, Sacred Heart, and Peabody. Multi-camera broadcasts, slow motion instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to our sponsors who make it all possible. The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network from Worthy Road Studios. The premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee. Great American Sports makes sports an addiction. Located at 125B Old Hickory Boulevard, East in Jackson, we specialize in teen sports for youth leagues, schools, and churches. We can embroider and screen print team uniforms. We also have sports equipment, Under Armour, and Adidas clothing, and anything else you need for your teen sports. You can email or call us for all your teen sports needs. Great American Sports. Make sports an addiction. The best thing to order is when you are sitting at soccer practice, order it through your phone while you're sitting there, and then you go and pick it up. But you're much more of a planner than me. I am. And that's what I love about you. Yes. You know, I'm not that prepared. It's more seat in my pants. Downtown is thriving, and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Had an accident and in need of repairs? If you're being towed, make sure the driver knows where to take it. David White Body Shop to expedite the repair process. David White Body Shop has been in business over 42 years. They have factory trained certified technicians and they are a direct repair shop for most insurance companies. They make sure your vehicle is repaired to manufacturer's recommendations. Always insist on the professionals at David White Body Shop. Whether you're relocating into Jackson or just wanting something new and different, call Kenny Sutherland with Five Star Real Estate Services. He can help make your dreams become a reality. With over 20 years experience and helping over 1,000 families with their new home purchases, there's a reason that he is your new construction expert and home buying specialist. Call Kenny today direct at 731-444-1164 or 731-661-9. This is Lee Johnson. And this is Jason Lockridge from Southern Capital Advisors. We're thankful for the Jackson Christian family and are honored to help lay a foundation that will build our community for years to come. Welcome to Southern Capital Field and go Eagles. Dynamics Physical Therapy, your elite provider in sports medicine and performance. Now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. There we go. A great day to play basketball or baseball. Actually, I got thrown off there. Uh, actually, saw a basketball game this morning. But... Welcome. It's good afternoon. It's a little earlier than we normally play. This is when the JB is usually playing, but this is a game that got rained out Monday night and being made up here at 4 o'clock on Wednesday. And welcome to the Ball Game Blitz TV Network produced by Worthy Road Studios on the Facebook page of Jackson Christian. It will later be archived tonight on Worthy Road Studios' Facebook page. This is a copyright broadcast of Worthy Road Studios for 2024 any rebroadcast retransmission further editing or further use of this ball game blitz broadcast without the express written consent of worthy road studios is strictly prohibited and it is illegal uh, i am coach joe holloway i'll be your announcer for today's broadcast and of course worthy road studios does a wonderful job with all kinds of high school games you can see jackson christian usj tca Peabody football, Sacred Heart basketball, and uh, we do all kinds of games, including soccer, for those high schools. 
Also do some plays and things like that from time to time. Union University is broadcast by Worthy Road Studios. Their broadcast of the home games include volleyball, soccer, basketball, softball, and baseball. And the Gulf South Conference has encouraged their other schools to use the Worthy Road models for their broadcast. And, of course, Jackson's Rockabillies are on Worthy Road Studios. They produce all of the Rockabilly baseball. And Paul and the crew, Chris, part of it, won a an award last year for that. And this is an award-winning franchise here. We also have Bethel football. And speaking of that, today, Caleb Newsom, the great outside rusher, defensive end, he can play other positions, signed with Bethel University to play football there next year from here in Jackson Christian School. All of our games are archived to Worthy Road Studios' YouTube channel. The executive producer for the Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios is Paul Schultze. And I will remind you before we talk about other things, without the, our broadcasters, and we want you to support them and, and tell them you appreciate them, go by, use their products, their services, because without them you'd be paying the National Federation fee to see a game and uh, the quality of Worthy Road Studios broadcast uh, really outshines anything the National Federation can do on a local level. Um, you're going to pay for the state tournament games and stuff, and whether your team's in it or not. And uh, some of our advertisers, our gold advertisers, are Carlock Nissan, Aloha Pools, Jones Chevrolet, the Blacksmith Restaurant, Dynamics Physical Therapy, Humboldt Chrysler, Dodge Jeep, Ram, also Elite Dental, Bank of Jackson, McCoy's Heating and Air, and Deaton's Carpet One. And, of course, Jackson Christian's silver sponsors or advertisers are Kenny Sutherland and the Five Star Realty, Great American Sports, Southern Capital Advisors, and David White Body Shop. And, again, I'll remind you one more time, please support those people. Today, an important game. It's a district game. Last year, these two teams split, and it – Cost Jackson Christian, who tied with T T R A, a chance to be the number one team in the district on the tiebreaker rules, and that puts you in a different bracket when going into region play. We did well, but I felt like that uh, we had a chance of making the state tournament had uh, we not lost the tiebreaker, and we did advance. I believe and played three more games, but you want to go all the way and get back to the big show. Jackson Christian, two-time state champion. Chase McLean played on one of those teams and was an assistant coach on the other. We've had multiple trips to the state tournament and done quite well there. Tipton Rosemark comes in with a record of 6-8, and eight, but don't let that fool you. They've played a tough schedule. We come in also having played a tough schedule. The Eagles are 6-4. and four. We're going to take a timeout, and when we come back, we'll try to set this game up a little more for you. Let's take that timeout on the Jackson Christian Worthy Road Facebook Network. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state-of-the-art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. No matter where you are, you can shop 24-7 at HumboldtDodgeChryslerJeep.com with the area's largest used car inventory. Whether you're relocating into Jackson or just wanting something new and different, call Kenny Sutherland with Five Star Real Estate Services. He can help make your dreams become a reality. With over 20 years experience and helping over 1,000 families with their new home purchases, there's a reason that he is your new construction expert and home buying specialist. Call Kenny today direct at 731-444-1164 or 731-661-9. This is not your typical car dealer ad. You usually see words like this and numbers like this. I'm not doing it. We have discounts. We have special interest rates. 
just like everybody else. What they don't have is me. 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 Buy your next vehicle where you feel comfortable, and that's with us. Visit online for savings and rates. You should already be here. It's the off season, but it's the best season to buy at Aloha Custom Pools. Snag your dream pool now, and we promise you'll be splashing around by Memorial Day. What are you waiting for? Give us a call or visit us at alohacustompools.com. We are back. Uh, Tipton Rosemark Rebels here. Yesterday, the Eagles beat them six to nothing at the Rebels house over there. Uh, JT Mullins had a big single that extended the lead to two to nothing. And of course, uh, some people say a solo home run by Daniel Green went 380 feet. And Carson Holt had a single that scored two runs. Austin Kelly won that one. And as you can see, they are introducing the starting lineups. And uh, we'll go down through here. Number nine, Trey Scott is starting in right field, batting number two, number 21, Wesley Penner, the shortstop. In the third spot is number six, Kate Allen, the first baseman. The cleanup hitter is number one, Eli West, the center fielder. Batting fifth, Aiden Petrowski. He's the designated hitter. And batting sixth, the pitcher, Hunter Harkness. Number 14, bats seventh. That's Carson Funk, the catcher. Number 17, bats eighth. That's Connor Vowell, and the, he's the third baseman. 26 is the center fielder, Adam Redman and he is batting ninth. Not batting is Jordan DiBiase. He plays second base. Now for the Jackson Christian Eagles, as they get introduced, leading off today will be Reed Cooper, the second baseman, batting second, wearing number seven in right field, J.T. Mullins, batting third. Number 24, Zach Creasy, the third baseman. Batting fourth, the cleanup hitter, the center fielder, Easton Jones. He wears 22, batting fifth. The designated hitter, number 21, Carson Holt, batting six. The shortstop and winning pitcher yesterday, number one, Austin Kelly, batting seventh. A.J. Hastings in left field. He wears number 12. Batting eighth, Eli Smith, the fine young catcher, wears number 14. And hitting ninth, the home run hitting Daniel Green, wears 16. And is a Golden Glove first baseman. And Carter Ellis will be your pitcher on the mound. Let's take a timeout. Why go on vacation when you can live on vacation? Aloha Custom Pools will help you create your very own piece of paradise and you can enjoy it every day. What are you waiting for? Take the plunge. Call Aloha Custom Pools or visit us online. We realize you have a busy lifestyle and at the Bank of Jackson, we're here to help you fulfill all of your financial needs, personal and business loans, mortgages, online banking and bill pay, and so much more. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Hello folks, this is Gary Deaton, right here at Deaton's Carpet One. I want to let you know we've been in business for 48 years. Here's what I believe has made the difference. Our lifetime labor warrant on everything we install. Our healthy living installation, bacteria and germs cannot survive in our new flooring. Our beautiful guarantee, if you don't just love it, we'll replace it. It will make your flooring experience priceless. We're located on Freedom Highway, 1000 Highway 45 Bypass in good old Jackson, Tennessee. This is not your typical car dealer ad. You usually see words like this and numbers like this. I'm not doing it. We have discounts. We have special interest rates, just like everybody else. What they don't have is me. 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 Buy your next vehicle where you feel comfortable, and that's with us. Visit online for savings and rates. You should already be here. Downtown is thriving, and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. A beautiful day to play, too. We are here on Jackson Christian's Facebook page as a, an important district contest between Jackson Christian, who will be the home team today, and Tipton Rosemark commences. Jackson Christian won yesterday's game six to nothing. 
Now, I don't see the scoreboard's working. I don't know if the message board is right now. You see Carter Ellis taking his warm-up tosses. And uh, do not recognize the umpire here at home plate, very young umpire. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. And let's see if we can even make the game changer and stuff work. That kind of helps us keep up with pitches and a lot of good information. And uh, Ellis Ware's number two. He's a right-hander. The last time we did a baseball game, he was the winning pitcher over Northside. Likes the curveball the, and the breaking stuff. Has a sneaky fastball. And he also can uh, work the corners of the plate. And he probably has two more pitches if I, I looked up and saw the umpire's signal. Trey Scott will lead off for the Rebels. And he'll be followed by Wesley Penner and Cade Allen. And this is a formidable team. Jackson Christian wants to win both of the regular season games. And, of course, Tipton Rosemark would like to get out of here with a split. What makes this game so important, USJ has already taken Trinity Christian Academy twice. And Trey Scott, a left-handed hitter, steps in here. Oh, this, Yeah, Trey Scott. Here's the pitch, and it is low. Almost hit him in the foot. And it is a ball one count. And they put up strike two, so maybe I missed something in there. I'm still looking to see what is up. They've got it as an 0-2 count. Now they erase the count. Let's see what they put up there. It's 3-0, and and that's what I thought it was. It doesn't mean I'm right all the time. Sometimes those things happen. And they walked him on four straight pitches, and that's not the start you want you to go. We want to keep the errors down if you're a Jackson Christian fan and the walks down. Had a bad combination over in Memphis last week, 15 base runners due to errors and walks, and that is not good. Your leadoff man, Trey Scott, gets on. That brings up Wesley Penner, the shortstop, who's a good athlete in his own right in other sports too. And the curveball missing. So five straight balls have been thrown. Pitching out of the stretch is Ellis. That one looked good for a strike, and you see the umpire's right hand go out there. So a 1-1 count with a runner at first, infield at double play depth, straight away in the outfield. The runner is going. It's a foul tip. The runner will come back. Having a little bit of Internet problem here, so I have not got the game changer pitch count. We'll, we'll look for that here in a little bit. The one-two pitch on the way, the breaking ball, slow bounding ball, high chopper. Creasy doesn't field it. It hits the glove, trying to make the quick throw. A lot of pressure on that, and uh, I'm going to call it an error. Uh, it's tough. He might not have thrown him out, reserved the right to go back and change that. And, of course, Kate Allen up there, number six. And people do not call me during the ball game. Uh, my cell phone is my source with the score, official scoring and stuff. That's the reason I couldn't tell you. And you see Ellis step off and run the runner back. There's several ways of chasing the runner back. Two runners on, no outs in the inning. Tipton Rosemark. With their number three hitter, Kate Allen, the first baseman up there, would love to have a big inning. And um, no harm, no foul on that one as it gets through the web of the catcher's glove. But another ball, and you cannot keep throwing balls that put you in the pitcher behind and in a bad situation helps the hitter. 
Allen's front foot, even with the plate. And they chase the runner back. Nobody covering. If there's any covering done, Austin Kelly will have to do it because Reed Cooper too far away at second. He's playing the young man to hit the right field. Love to turn to Jackson Christian Wood. Here's the pitch. He offers bunt. It's a strike. It's a one and one count. Daniel Green all over it. Daniel could have handed out his business card then. No outs. Runners on first and second. Nellis in the stretch. Checks the runner. And you don't have to throw it to second. Wasn't any really, really serious action on other than getting the runner back. With a 1-1 count, let's see if the coach has taken the bunt signal off. He looks a little more like he wants to hit away this time. Strong hitter, and he is hitting away. Drives one to Reed Cooper, and it's a double play. The pitcher's best friend, a line drive to the second baseman, who goes to second. And score that 4-6 for the second out. And the DP really helps. That leaves a runner on first base with two outs now. Brings up the cleanup hitter, and he is the DH. Aiden Petrowski wears number three, hits right-handed. Outfield a little deeper, a couple of steps. Right field very deep in the shade. That one got the corner. That's that curveball. And when it's hitting, Carter Ellis is very tough. Ellis taking a stretch, checks the runners going, swinging strike, the peg to second, just a hair late. And we'll get the, now Game Changers decided it wants to work, the internet wants to work. And we want to thank the great internet crew here at Jackson Christian for making it work. No balls, two strikes, two outs, a runner at second. Ellis would love to get out of this first inning, and let's see then if he settles down a little bit. Popped up in foul territory. Green ranges over. The right fielder ranges over. Does he get there in time? No. He will return the ball, so it remains no balls, two strikes. With Eli West actually is at the plate. My apologies for getting them out of order. Eli West, the center fielder, and he's a great athlete too. Ellis has 15 pitches unofficially. We'll get an official count here pretty soon. But West wearing number one. He would love to drive the run in. Now, is this going to be a waste pitch or are they going after him? It's a little bit of waste pitch. West tempted, but good hitting on his part. Both these clubs are well coached. Tipton Rosemark is co-coached, and we'll tell you who their co-coach are. Chase McLean, the head mentor, but we've got other fine coaches too. Here's the one-two pitch. Swinging strike three. The breaking ball got him. An interesting inning. He goes down swinging for the third out of the inning. And unofficially, there were no runs. One word was left. There was one error. And at the end of a half inning of play, no score. Let's take a timeout on the Worthy Road Studios Network. Buy a car in your bikini. Buy a truck in your jammies. Buy an SUV in your, well, <laughs> no matter what you're wearing or not. Shop JonesChevroletHumboldt.com with the area's largest used car inventory. Great American Sports makes sports an addiction. Located at 125B Old Hickory Boulevard, East in Jackson, we specialize in teen sports for youth leagues, schools, and churches. We can embroider and screen print team uniforms. We also have sports equipment, Under Armour, and Adidas clothing, and anything else you need for your teen sports. You can email or call us for all your teen sports needs. Great American Sports. Make sports an addiction. An interesting first inning. Tipton Rosemark put two on. Pitching is way out of it with the help of the pitcher's best friend, a double play. Started by Reed Cooper, the fine fielding second baseman. And the man who started the double play, Reed Cooper, will be the first hitter up there. He is hitting 321. 
on the mound for the Tipton Rosemark team is number 12, Hunter Harkness. Right-handed pitcher. I like their catcher. He and I had a little talk. Val, he, he is a tough man. He looks like a catcher just like uh, we have people that look like certain positions. And uh, I'm glad he is wearing the catching tools and not me. Batting 321 and stepping in there is Reed Cooper, the second baseman. He'll be followed by J.T. Mullins, the right fielder, and Zach Creasy. Carson Holt, if needed. Here's the first pitch. And that one is right down Main Street for a strike. It's 0-1 the count. Peering in, got his sign. Harkness ready. This one kind of off the fist. The third baseman says, I'll take it. You saw him wave everybody away. There's one out in the inning. On a pop to the third baseman, that brings up J.T. Mullins, the right fielder hitting 333. JT hits left-handed, wears number seven for old-timers like me. That's Mickey Mantle's old number. But here at Jackson Christian, a nice revered number over the years. JT's got good speed from the left side. They're playing him straight away in a little bit third because JT will drop a bunt every once in a while. He's a good bunter. He's going to step out because the pitcher took way too long. Of course, Harkness disposed of Reed Cooper on two pitches. That one high, kind of overthrew that one, and you watch the follow through, a nice follow through, but a little bit to the first base side, and that may be why the third baseman then you could bunt down that third baseline, and the pitcher falling off to the right won't be any help. Let's see if he adjusts his wind up just a hair. That one much better. He could have fielded. But it is the second pitch for a ball, as you can see, that great center field shots we have here with Worthy Road Studios. Paul Schulze actually coming out of the executor's box and is doing camera work 3-0. and And Jackson Christian would like nothing better than to get J.T. Mullins on by walk, error, base hit, whatever. He's a good base runner. And a nice hard pitch, but outside and away. And you see him taking off all the protect, protective gear. Stepping up to hold him on will be Allen, the first baseman. So JT is on with a walk, a runner at first. Zach Creasy hitting 400 even. Right-handed hitter, front foot is even with the box slightly, not much, but a little bit of a closed stance. And the curveball sneaks in there. That one kind of backdoored him a little bit. Good pitch. Good call by the umpire. So it's 0-1 the count. That one gets away, and so the runner will advance. And you want to call that one a wild pitch. I'm going to take that because it could be a pass ball. Catcher was up there, but it did get away. It doesn't matter. Mullins is on at second in scoring position with one out. One ball, one strike, one out, one runner on second base. The hitter, Zach Creasy. Zach would like nothing but to power one into one of the higher alleys. He wanted that one. It was a little low and away, and it's ball two. And, again, some great shots by the camera crew. Our producer, Chris, always does a great job. Here comes the 2-1 pitch. Strike two. Now the count is even. Two balls, two strikes. Greasy will have to guard the plate. There's another good shot of just the pitcher, the umpire. And you get multiple shots with Worthy Road Studios. In the shade is the right fielder. Sometimes that plays havoc with you. Staying alive, fouling off. That's one of those pitches that fool Creasy just a little bit. But he also has to guard the plate. That runs the pitch count up a little bit. Harkness has thrown 10 pitches unofficially. Here's the pitch. This one would have drawn rain. It went up so high. The shortstop under it and drops it. And we'll have runners at first and second. We'll have to call that an E6. 
And you've got runners on first and second. Creasy at first. Mullins, and those are hard. High sky here. As Ernie Banks would say, it'd be a great day to play two. We're playing one with no JV game today. Now, Tipton Rosemark won the JV game. And also, uh, hopefully I'll get a text from uh, Chuck Ray. Middle school is 6-1. and one. I think they've got a game with the Trenton Middle School tomorrow. That'll be a big game. Here's the pitch. A swinging strike. And I'm going to tell you what. Easton Jones got his money's worth. Easton hits 448. Right-handed hitter. Plays a mean center field. He's quicker than a hiccup. And... Uh, Check the runner at second. Let's see. They'll check and see if he went around, and they say, no, it's ball one, one and one. I thought he held up myself also, but I'm not umpiring. Those guys are down there. They see it. They are a lot closer than I am. Two runners on infield. One half the infield's at double play depth. Here's a ground ball shortstop. They'll never get two. They may not get anybody because he went down. And I've got to score that one as an infield hit with a great effort by the shortstop pinner to try to hold. So the first hit of the ball game for either team. And that goes to our young man, Easton Jones. And that brings up the powerful Carson Holt hitting 250. He's capable. That right field fence is awful inviting out there. He had a healthy cut, and it's fouled off. Sacks are jammed. Mullins at first. Creasy at second. Jones at first with the base hit. Double play gets the pitcher out of the inning. Base hit, scores at least one. Just missing. Even though it came out of Val's glove, I thought he framed it well. The umpire got a good look, and he says it's a ball. One and one to count with one out. Sacks jammed. Outfield straight away and deep. Nice pitch, and that's where you want to throw left-handed hitters, that low inside. That one had a little, like a little bit of a breaking ball, too. So it's one and two. Carson Holt has to protect the plate now. He's in the very back of the batter's box. And I thought he would ask the umpire for time and step out. Pitcher took a lot of time, and that uh, is a little disturbing sometimes when you're a hitter. You want, want to try to get a rhythm just like the pitcher. That one is low and outside. Again, get take a look at that great shot. You see Dynamics, who does the personal training and a lot, takes care of a lot of the injury work here at Jackson Christian and other schools. And the catcher holds the, I think he tipped it, but it's still a strikeout for the second out. Bases jammed for yesterday's winning pitcher, Austin Kelly. A big hit here would be Something Austin would love, dearly love to give the fans. Austin also the quarterback in football. Uh, he threw so many touchdown passes. That one is high. He hooked up not only with Jalen Mosley, but through Daniel Green, several of those. Daniel going on to UTC. Great shortstop, good pitcher in baseball. Nice, healthy swing. But fouled off, one and one. Got under it a little more than he probably wanted to. You want to get that sweet part of the bat. And with metal bats, their sweet spot's a little different than the sweet spot of a wooden bat. The bigger gap is in left center, if he can get one there. There's a ground ball. Will the shortstop, he got to it, but it's going to be another one of those you could call an infield hit. And the run will score. That's J.T. Mullins crossing the plate. Kelly with the RBI and the second hit of the inning. Everybody moves up a base. And that brings to the plate A.J. Hastings, the left fielder. A.J. with a slightly open stance, hitting 188. Harkness is ready. 
And good bat control by A.J. then. Because Harkness threw him a good, I call him number one, or Von Ryan Expresses. You can see the open stance there with the front foot towards third base, but it'll step towards the pitcher when the ball's delivered. Nice pitch on the corner. He painted the corner well. The umpire made the proper call, and it's one and one with two outs. Runners will be going with the crack of the bat or the ping of the bat in the case of a metal bat. Shows you that I used to play when there was wood bats. Here's the pitch fouled away. And I might, Chris and I, if we'd had one of those fish nets, Mike could have stuck it out there and caught us one, but you don't get a snow cone or anything for it. But there's nothing like fun here at the old ballpark. We're working from the Worthy Roads studio trailer that's on site here at the ball game. The breaking ball stays high. It's a 2-2 count, two outs. I can't say deuce is wild because there's three runners on. Jackson Christian leading one run to nothing. Two hits in the inning so far. A.J. would love to have one. And a swinging strike three ends the inning. But there was one run on two hits. There was one error and three men left on base. The end the score at the end of one inning of play. Jackson Christian won Tipton Rosemark nothing. We'll be back after this timeout on the Jackson Christian Facebook. Had an accident and in need of repairs? If you're being towed, make sure the driver knows where to take it. David White Body Shop to expedite the repair process. David White Body Shop has been in business over 42 years. They have factory trained certified technicians and they are a direct repair shop for most insurance companies. They make sure your vehicle is repaired to manufacturer's recommendations. Always insist on the professionals at David White Body Shop. The best thing to order is when you are sitting at soccer practice, order it through your phone while you're sitting there, and then you go and pick it up. But you're much more of a planner than me. I am. And that's what I love about you. Yes. You know, I'm not that prepared. It's more seat in my pants. Downtown is thriving, and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. And we are back, and it just dawned on me. I was kind of reviewing. I talked to Carson Funk before the ball game, the catcher for, uh, I put it down in the book. I just had their positions in the, wrong and Carson Funk catching today wears number 14. Connor Val's actually at third base and leading off though for the Rebels in the top of the second correctly is Adam Petrowski the designated hitter. He is a senior. He'll be facing Carter Ellis who started out the inning a little rough but a double play got him out of that one then he uh, struck out a hitter for the third out. First pitch, low and outside. And as we said, Petrowski a senior. That one in the dirt, but off to the side of the plate, 2-0. and oh. And the one thing that Carter does not want to do is get behind on the count. Here's the pitch. In and out of the glove for ball three. 19 pitches thrown by Carter Ellis. And again, these are unofficial counts today. Oh, nice pitch. 3-1 now the count. Everybody straight away in at normal depth. There's another walk, and that's what got him in trouble in the first inning. Petrowski will be the runner at first, and it brings up the junior. Number 12, Hunter Harkness, he's the pitcher. He got out of some bases loaded trouble in the first. As you see, a right-handed hit, a great shot right there from our center field camera. And it'll fool you. It had him out, got his weight shifted forward, and that's a strike, breaking ball again. Just for fun at home, see if you can pick up the whether it's a breaking ball or a fastball. 
Double play depth. They go to first with a pickoff move. Green catches it, but no tag. Is diving back in there very quickly was Petrowski. So one strike count. Running. Pitch is low and away, and that's a tough one for the catcher to throw it out. It's a 1-1 one, one count now. Twenty-three pitches thrown by Ellis. Of course, this is Harkness's first trip to the plate. We're in the top of the second. Jackson Christian leading one to nothing. Just missing with that pitch, so it's a two-one count. Had a signing at Jackson Christian today. Caleb Newsom, the great defensive end linebacker. He can rush, he can chase you down, play the run. He'll be going to Bethel University to continue his football career and study criminology. Checks the runner. The 2-1 pitch. The breaking ball, yes. Definitely yes. And that was a mean breaking ball then. Looked like it was going to stay high, and it broke sharply. 2-2 two, two the count with that runner in second, no outs. Ellis steps off back of the mound, and you do that. You can't step forward. It's a balk if he'd step forward, but stepping back like that, you are perfectly legal. Here's the pitch to the plate. Breaking ball, line back, and Ellis helps himself. Nice catch by him. And Harkness had tattooed it. It was a line drive for the first out. Here comes Carson Funk, the fine catcher. Funk, a senior this year. He would like nothing better. Very strong young man. Then to get a base hit and get that run in and tie it up, Ellis wants to get him. Good job by the catcher for Jackson, Christian Smith, to keep that one in front of him. That was the old 59-foot curveball, 60 feet, 6 inches to home plate. So one ball, no strike count, with one out in the inning and a runner at second. That one a little high. Release point. Uh, the, some fun things for you watch are release points where the front leg or if there's so much falling off a uh, right-handed pitcher towards first base. Check all those on both pitchers. Check the hitters. And with our great shots, you can check their foot position. That tells you a lot, too. This one drilled out the left field, getting on his horse, going over and fielding. They won't tag up. But a great job by A.J. Hastings. And A.J. made it look easy out there. Two outs in the inning as Funk flies out. A.J. A. Jr. And the hitter is Connor Vowell, number 17, the third baseman, left-handed hitter. Kind of tight up on the plate. There's the breaking ball. It was high. Good call by the umpire. Now, when you're a pitcher, you've got to show the hitter that either pitcher has to show the hitters they own the inside of the plate just like you do. But this is a good stance. A lot of times you can pitch left-handed hitters low and inside. The breaking ball is a strike. you got death, taxes, and that pitch was a, the sure thing is a strike. One and one the count. Two outs. That runner at second, he wants to come home. Jackson Christian wants to keep him there and get the third out. Fouled away. And I like this because Val headed towards first base. He didn't stand there and admire the handiwork, even though it went out of field of play. So one and two the count. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Connor Val, the third baseman, would dearly love to drive this run in. Carter Ellis would dearly love to get this hitter out. 
and go to the bench and get some more run support. Swinging, and it gets away, and I don't know if we'll get him thrown out. Yes, a close play. You've got officially a strikeout, and then you've got a 2-3 throwout at first base for the third out of the inning. And there were no runs, no hits, no errors, one left, and we'll be back after one and one-half innings of play with Jackson Christian leading one to nothing. Whether you're relocating into Jackson or just wanting something new and different, call Kenny Sutherland with Five Star Real Estate Services. He can help make your dreams become a reality. With over 20 years experience and helping over 1,000 families with their new home purchases, there's a reason that he is your new construction expert and home buying specialist. Call Kenny today direct at 731-444-1164 or 731-661-9000. You trade in your car. You trade in your house. So why not get some equity back from your old HVAC system? McCoy's Heating and Air will now give you up to $2,000 trade-in for your old unit, plus a free 10-year parts and labor warranty with the purchase of a qualifying York system. That's right. Trade in your old unit and get up to $2,000, plus a free 10-year parts and labor warranty. For a limited time, only from McCoy's Heating and Air. Top of the second on a beautiful day here at Jackson Christian. Got a wonderful ballpark. These coaches do a great job of manicuring and taking care of this place. Stepping into the box leading off is Eli Smith, the catcher, who played Indian rubber man and blocked a pitch in the dirt while ago to save a runner advancing. He'll be followed by Daniel Green, then back to the top of the order, Reed Cooper. And I'll have to check my pitch counts, but I believe there were 28 pitches thrown by Harkness in that first inning, and you prefer to keep it under 20. And there's a nice strike. And that time, good form, good pitch, good uh, fastball, and it's an 0-1 count. Eagles leading. Swinging strike two. Eli Smith hitting 200 and catching. Daniel Green, who hit one, they say, about 380 yesterday on deck. Here's a ground ball up the middle. Will the shortstop get to it? Range, he knocks it down, but I believe, no, it got through. He made it look good, and so Smith will be on, and we'll see if we get a courtesy runner. Nice piece of hitting by Smith there. And, yes, we will get a courtesy runner. And Jack Collins, the speedy senior. Let's see if there's any action with Jack. Of course, Daniel Green, he's only hitting 192, but when he does make contact, and I got a feeling he will hurt a few people blocking next year for the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, and when he runs with the football, he rumbles. That time they fooled him on that pitch low and outside. He had pulled out a little bit, but if he had gotten that one, you, we would have been asking for new baseball. So no balls, one strike. Harkness pitching out of the stretch with the speedy Jack Collins at first base, who did a great job playing defensive back and some wide out for the football team. They throw to first because they're thinking like I'm thinking that Jack might be going. Todd Lumley coaching at first, Chase McLean at second. In the dugout coaching, uh, Brian Bullard, Carter Holt, and Colin Cantrell. We show Bunt. Green puts down a dandy for a big man. Pitcher slips. He throws the first and just gets Green, who was hustling down that line. But that is a sacrifice bunt. That's team play right there where one of your home run hitters to advance the runner gives himself up. One out. The runner advances on the sacrifice bunt. And, in fact, that came close to being a base hit. Reed Cooper, who's 0 for 1, as he popped out to the third baseman vow the last time up. And I like what Harkness did. And I'm not coaching, but he stepped off, made the runner go back. Second baseman will have to do the covering shortstop deep in the hole and too far away to give much help on holding on. Nice pitch. 
And Harkness not using as many pitches as he threw in that first inning. He's only thrown seven so far in this inning. Collins, this one a chopper. They call it a Baltimore chopper. Will they get him at first? No, he beats it out, and you must score that a hit. The runner advances to third, and now we've got, let's see what the head man decides. Chase McLean, we got first and third. We got one out. You want to avoid the double play. You've seen them the day before. Will Tipton Rosemark throw through, throw to third base? Not throw it all or just throw it back hard to the pitcher and try to catch the runner at third. Jack Collins, a very smart athlete in any sport, is at third. Cooper, who's got good speed at second, or actually at first, edging towards a cutout. Harkness looking for a sign. And there's a strike. J.T. Mullins up there. He walked his first time up and has scored the only run in this contest. Left-handed hitter up on the plate. Just missing. And the umpire says it was a little bit too much inside. He also is wanting the umpire to switch sides on the bases. Nice pitch. And that one was over the edge of the plate. One and two, the count. JT would love to have a hit here. Center fielder shading him a couple of steps towards right field. Right fielder straight away in the shade out there. Sun field, the rest of the field. Left fielder straight away. The ball, and they're going to take off. They don't throw through, throw back to the pitcher. Second and third. One out. Very good chance at a base hit if it gets through the infield. Means two. Mullins has a 2-2 count. And he steps out. And, again, when they stay too long, you want to, You want to step out sometimes if you are the hitter. JT steps back in there. Here's the pitch. Outside, three balls, two strikes. JT Mullins, who's played in 10 games, had 27 at-bats. His on-base percentage is 571. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Breaking ball, two inside and walks him. Matter of fact, he had to do a little hop, skip, and jump right there to keep from getting hit. So Mullins is now on first with the walk. Cooper on second and Collins on third. Coming to the plate, Zach Creasy, who was on with the error the last time. Infield in at first and third, back at double play depth at second and short. One out in the inning. And that pitch is high. One ball, no strikes to Creasy. Creasy was batting 400. It'll be a little bit under that because the error counts against you even though you get on. Pitcher staying with the stretch with the bases loaded. Nice breaking ball to even the count. Zach's on base percentage is 564. Sogging percentage, 600. He's had five doubles this year if I read my chart right. This one popped up. Deep will be tagging to the left fielder. The left fielder gets under it. He'll return it. And the first base runner won't advance. But Collins scores. Or actually that uh, will get the... Get it all straight. Yes, that's Collins scoring. Cooper will go to third, and Mullins will hold it first. That is a sacrifice fly. Does not count as a time at bat. Also an RBI. And there's two outs, and that brings up 
Easton Jones, who had the first hit in this contest. Easton, a right-handed hitter. He's looking situation over. He also checked his head coach out, who's the third base coach. Good job by the runner at third of staying out of fair territory because if you get hit there with a line drive or one on the ground, you're not out if you're in fair territory. And you can do what just happened. You step back you and you don't have to throw. That's one of the few times you don't have to throw to first. Now this time I think we've got a balk. Run will score. Everybody advances, so Reed Cooper will come in. J.T. Mullins goes down to second. Easton Jones has a chance to pick up an RBI, and it's a 3 to nothing Jackson Christian lead over the Tipton Rosemark Rebels. Of course, don't know if they're watching. They may be. John Scott and Bobby Baker, former headmasters over at Tipton Rosemark, was a nice healthy cut but did not make contact. Easton in the hole, 0-1. Of course, that's not like being in the 0-2 situation. Harkness wanting to work out of this without another run coming in. We'll check his pitch count in a minute. This one fouled off. It's 0-2, and, and now you got a guard to play. That should be Harkness's 43rd pitch in two innings. And like I said, you want to stay under 20, if at all possible, preferably under 15. And a great or excellent inning is when you only make 10 to 12 pitches. 0-2 pitch, high. And overthrew it a little bit, but also I think it was a little bit of a temptation pitch. Easton Jones, one for one, coming into this at bat. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Breaking ball, and they got him. You could see it before the umpire ever pulled the trigger, but a great job by the ump, and that is a strikeout for the third out, but not before Jackson Christian picked up two more big runs, three runs, four hits, and one error for Jackson Christian through two innings. No runs, no hits, one error for Tipton Rosemark. We'll be back after this time out on the Jackson Christian Worthy Road Studios Network. This is Lee Johnson. And this is Jason Lockridge from Southern Capital Advisors. We're thankful for the Jackson Christian family and are honored to help lay a foundation that will build our community for years to come. Welcome to Southern Capital Field and go Eagles. Dynamics Physical Therapy, your elite provider in sports medicine and performance. Now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. 3 nothing after 2, Jackson Christian leads in this district contest. Adam Redman, the center fielder, wears number 26 and a right-handed hitter, will be coming up to the plate for Tipton Rose Mark. You can hear the public address announcer. Tommy McLean does a great job. And uh, remind you, the middle school baseball team, 6-1 and one at this point. Of course, Chuck Ray helps with that. Boy, what a nice pitch by Carter Ellis for a strike. And if you're here watching the game, trust me, go try Chuck's hamburgers that he's cooking for the concession stand. They're the best in West Tennessee. Breaking ball goes outside. It's a 1-1 count. This is the first plate appearance for Adam Redman. This is the ninth batter in the lineup. Swinging strike two. Ellis had a little, a little juice on that one. Throwing that ball up there. Everybody at normal depth. Maybe the right fielder might be shading the line by step. High foul ball. Looks like it's going to get out of play. Hits on the concrete. Bounces up. And they'll send somebody will come out to get it because uh, in high school baseball you don't have folks.
paid to chase baseballs or either. Uh, and that time, the strikeout, and they'll take it around the horn. One out in the inning, the top of the order, and Trey Scott coming up. That is the third strikeout for Carter Ellis. Scott was on with a base on balls, but got erased in a line drive double play. Hit her with a good eye up there. That one just got the edge of the black part of the plate on the inside there. As you can see, the umpire gave the signal. No balls, one strike. Ellis working quicker now. The breaking ball, ground ball may get through for a base hit. And that will be the first base hit for the Rebels. Good piece of hitting by Trey Scott. And I am betting that by the second pitch that Brother Scott is on the run. Just feel it. If it's not, I will be in shock. Trace, a junior. And coming out of there like he's wanting to pick him off at first was the catcher, Smith. And he says, I'm here. I'm letting you know. That one was a ball. So Wesley Pinner up there with one out, a runner at first. The shortstop, one ball, no strike count. Stepping out a little bit. Pitcher took a little long. Kate Allen on deck. Ellis, jump turn goes to first. That's the uh, I know you're there, and I'm going to make you dive move. Uh, Carter can has got a pickoff move that's a step quicker. And uh, last year, if you remember, he picked off a couple of people. There's the breaking ball, barely getting a piece. And a swinging strike evens the count at one and one. One out in the inning. Penner, who's been very busy at shortstop, he's fielded a lot of balls that normally gets through, just was in not in position to throw them out. And that went outside, high and outside. Two ball, one strike, center fielder straight away. Hastings straight away and left. Mullins may be favoring the line of step. He's back in the shade, too. The shade's starting to take over as the sun gets closer, setting the breaking ball, and that one dropped in there. It's kind of like you roll a baseball off of a table the way it dropped. Two balls, two strikes. I'm surprised they have not run the runner. Scott, he may be going this time. Let's see, his weight has shifted. Yes, he is. There, he's fouled off, and he'll come back. That's another thing that we, when you, we give you a first base shot, check it out. You can actually see sometimes these young people shift their weight, or you can see more weight on the push-off or crossover foot. Here's our center field shot with a two-ball, two-strike count. And, wow, that one is one. It looks like a beach ball. It's not fourth strikeout, two outs in the inning, and that brings up Cade Allen, who lined it. I mean, if he gets over Reed's hands, Reed Cooper's hands, uh, people are running forever because it would have been in the gap, but it was caught and, and turned into a double play. Two outs, and Penner was going then, but he got back. Trust me, if you saw the little wobble or wiggle, whatever you want to call it in there, I have different names for things. I guarantee you Scott was going on that pitch. Let's see if they've still got it on. They'd like to get him to second and give a chance to drive him in. This could be a very tight ball game today. And you say, well, 3 nothing's a nice lead. Yeah, one, one at bat can erase that. If you get two runners on, somebody put one out of here, especially – the right field here at the Mural Haas field is very inviting. That one gets away and he, from the catcher. And it, Scott will be at second. No need to steal. Got a one ball, no strike count to a very good hitter. The third hitter in their lineup, Kate Allen, first baseman. Another one of those guys that looked like he could drive a baseball a long way if he gets it in his wheelhouse. The breaking ball for a strike. Right 
Kate Allen, a senior. Kelly will hold on just a little bit. Big hole if you can get it towards the shortstop. It's up the middle. It's a base hit. There's nobody going to feel it. They're going to send the runner, and it kind of died on the outfield grass. Green will cut it off, and Scott has scored from second base. Cuts the lead down to a 3-1 lead for the Eagles over the Rebels. And you've got Kate Allen with a big RBI single for the Rebels at first base. Eli West wearing number one, the right-handed hitting center fielder. That one scooted out of the infield quick and then kind of started slowing down when it hit the grass in the outfield. Ellis's pitch got him just barely got that black part of the plate. West also a senior. A lot of seniors in this lineup as where Jackson Christian is a very, very young lineup. They're running. It bounces. Catcher cannot find it, but the runner not looking to try to advance to third. Coach was already holding up the stop sign at third base. And, of course, they have a co-coaching situation. Jacob Cole and Brad Smith, the co-head coaches. Connor McLemore, Tristan Barlow, and Blaine Curtis, their other coaches. One and one count, two outs, a runner in scoring position at second. And strike two. Jackson Christian's head mentor is Chase McLean, assisted by Todd Lumley, Brian Bullard, Carter Holt, and Colin Cantrell. Two good coaching staffs, two good teams here in a 3-1 contest led by Jackson Christian. One-two pitch on the way. Just missing, and Eli tried to frame it so the umpire might rule favorably. I would have done the same thing, and so would a lot of other catchers. Good job, uh, Eli, but the hitter was very disciplined and didn't swing at it. Two and two, two outs, the runners on second. Foul the breaking ball off to the right. Just don't knock the hamburgers over. Chuck working at grill, and again, some of y'all that are out there in the stands go by. And if not, keep the Facebook on your phone and drive up here and get you a hamburger if nothing else. 2-2 two -two pitch. Ellis checks at second. Comes to the plate with it. Swinging strike three, and I believe I'll check it, but that is his fifth strikeout unofficially. But one run is in on two hits. Score at the end of two and one-half innings of play, three to one. The Eagles lead the Rebels. Let's take a timeout on Jackson Christian. It's Facebook. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state-of-the-art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack from the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio. Eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. No matter where you are, you can shop 24-7 at HumboldodgeChryslerJeep.com with the area's largest used car inventory. We are back. I was going to tell you the Jackson pitch, uh, Christian pitcher, Carter Ellis, has thrown 10 innings this year and he's been in three games. And uh, he has a two and one record. He has given up only four earned runs, but unfortunately, his defensive support has given up seven earned runs. And of course, we'll give you a few more stats. But pitching right now is Harkness for the Rebels, and he'll be going against the number five hitter, Carson Holt, who struck out his last time up. Carson, a very strong hitter. That one just missing, fighting with a little bit of an injury, and that's the reason you haven't seen him pitch lately. A very good pitcher, and uh, he has made a baseball commitment. Ooh, a worm.
worm killer. Strike one. And he is committed to a junior college. Of course, hey, this young man probably has a bright future in baseball. And they say it's strike two. They said he did go around far enough. We also know that Aiden Shaw has committed to a uh, college in Florida. This one drilled. It's going to be a base hit. It's going to hit, spin, and uh, let's see. It came off the fence. And Carter Holt with a stand-up double. And, uh, wow. It, start, it was spinning so much it kind of died out there. And, uh He's on second. And that will bring up Austin Kelly, the shortstop who had a single in the first inning. Austin would like nothing better than to help the cause here. No outs in the inning. Love, he would love to get the run in or a nice pitch there. Austin wanted to go for it, but it started tailing away from him. Kelly's on base percentage is 316. Here's the pitch for strike two. So quickly ahead is Hunter Harkness. Harkness has thrown 54 pitches unofficially. Kelly's got to protect the plate here. Here's the pitch. Low. Catcher didn't find it for a minute, but did a good job of – Carson Funk did a good job of keeping it from going very far from him. And I don't think Carson wanted to try that. And like I said, he had a little inflammation and a little bit of an injury. I don't think he really wanted to find out if the legs would hold up on that one. That one is high. So let's see if that evens the count, and it does. At two and two, there is the runner at second, no outs. Outfield straight away. Shortstop deep and back on the grass. Second baseman doing most of the holding on, then he'll go to his position. And a swinging strike three. For the first out in the inning. Brings up A.J. Hastings, who struck out in the first. Unofficially, I've got four strikeouts. And there's a strike. Harkness has found the strike zone. Threw a lot of pitches in that first inning, but has settled down. 3-1, Jackson Christian leading here. We're in the bottom of the third. These games go seven unless the 10-run rule gets you. Out in front, A.J. fouls that one off. A.J.'s on base percentage is 435. Slugging percentage of 250. But he's in the hole and has to guard that plate at 0-2. And, and that one just missed. He's got a better eye than I've got. Carson Holt at second. One out in the inning. Breaking ball and managed to stay alive. Had his weight out on his front foot just a little bit, but he got a piece of it and stays alive. Eli Smith, the on-deck batter, gives a little help, gets it back to the pitcher. Still with the 1-2 count, one out, a runner on second. Harkness checking and coming to the plate. It's high, evens the count at 2-2. Two two. Infield is Allen, DiBiase, Penner, and Val. The outfield, Scott, West, and Redmond for the Rebels. Catching is Funk and pitching, Hunter Harkness. Hunter's pitch. Popped up. Let's see who gets it. Left fielder comes on, takes charge. There are two outs in the inning. Shortstop Pinner made a long run. That brings up 
Eli Smith, who scored in the second, had a single in the second, so he's one for one. Smith on base percentage, 286. Coach Chase McLean, you see him coming up the line as they may pinch run for Carter Holt. And it looks like that's number 20. That can't be 21 coming in. I did not get a good look at the number. And I did not, I don't have the number on my roster that Tommy McLean just announced. So we'll pick it up and get it straight for you. But there's still a runner at second. Eli Smith, who's one for one at the plate. Everybody straight away. Nice pitch, but just a little outside. Beautiful day here at the ballpark. Old Glory blowing towards left center field a little bit. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball. Fouled off. It'll be out of play. And I liked it. Eli took off running just like you would normally. Some people will either take one step or no steps and admire the ball going out. You like to see a young man aggressive like that. He's towards the back of the box, but his front foot extends even with the front of the plate. Here's the pitch. And again, getting under it just a little bit. And for those of you that know most players today, take that arc swing. And sometimes when you take that swing, and it's got different names, you get under it a little bit. We'll do it again at one, two, two outs, and that runner at second. Runner will be off with the ping of the bat. It sounds better to say crack of the bat, but these are not wooden bats. Eli steps out. Also, Harkness stepped back. And we'll step in and get ready to do it again. Runner checked. A dribbler down the third baseline. Third baseman comes in, feels it, shoots to first, and he's safe. And that is the proper call. I watched it on the – I know there's probably some people unhappy – but it looks like Smith has got his second hit, another single. He'll get a courtesy runner, and that probably will be the form of Jack Collins. And it looks like Jack coming across. It is the one and only senior Jack Collins. Let's see. They'll be signaling some strategy in from Tipton Rosemark, how they want to play this. Daniel Green coming to the plate. Let's see if we're running Collins early and Daniel's at bat. Now, if somebody throws Daniel a fastball down the middle, uh, we'll see if he's turned loose or if he's taking here. Daniel sacrificed Bunny the last time up there. Here's one drill to the shortstop. I'm going to score it a base hit. We'll see one run has crossed the plate. And I, that one had to be a – it had some mustard on it too. So a hit for Green. I've got that as the seventh one. Collins, the pinch runner, advances to second. And I'm going to tell you what, Pinner, the shortstop for Tipton Rosemark, gives it all he's got. That brings up Reed Cooper, who's one for two on the day. He scored and had a single his last at bat. A single here would be very important. The leadoff man – as far as the order, drilled, and I tell you what, that one was tattooed, and Val made a nice catch. You couldn't hit the ball any harder, but a nice catch for the third out. But that, again, did not stop Jackson Christian from getting a run, and it is four to one, four runs, seven hits, one error for Jackson Christian, one, two, and one. For the Rebels, let's take a timeout. Buying a home is a major milestone, and at the Bank of Jackson, we want to help you achieve it. Our mortgage specialists can assist you with conventional, VA, FHA, or construction loans, as well as USDA and THDA development loans. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. 
Hello folks, this is Gary Deaton, right here at Deaton's Carpet One. I want to let you know we've been in business for 48 years. Here's what I believe has made the difference. Our lifetime labor one and everything we install. Our healthy living installation, bacteria and germs cannot survive in our new flooring. Our beautiful guarantee, if you don't just love it, we'll replace it. It will make your flooring experience priceless. We're located on Freedom Highway, 1000 Highway 45 Bypass in good old Jackson, Tennessee. We are back. Carter Ellis comes to the mound for his work in the fourth inning. He will face Aiden Petrowski, the senior. Hunter Harkness, the pitcher, and Carson Funk, the catcher, will be the three scheduled hitters for this inning. Also a couple of weeks ago, Trent Carey signed with Washington U up in Missouri. Here's the first pitch of the fourth. It's a strike. And, yes, I'm calling them pretty quick. You can tell when some of those nice breaking ball. The 0-1 pitch drilled. Let's see if Creasy can come up with it. Crow hop step, long throw. It helps that Daniel Green look at the stretch on the young man. And uh, I call him a golden glove. We don't have golden gloves in high school, but he has saved a many an era over the time he has played first base. That one, if you're scoring at home, goes five to three. That's third to first for the first out of the inning. Brings up Harkness. And Harkness lined to the pitcher his first time up. Just missing. You see the umpire give that little wave like that. Harkness seems to have a pretty good eye. He's a junior. And that one thrown all the way but to the backstop. It was inside, but it wasn't. So much wild as it got by in a hurry, kind of scooted. Got the two pitchers going head-to-head -head with each other. Two ball, no strike pitch. The breaking ball, and that one misses. It stayed inside. Started to break, but didn't break enough to go back door and get inside. And let's see if the take sign is on it. 3-0 for Harkness. They won't base runners. There will be probably be a courtesy runner there. There's the strike. And he was taking all the way because you can tell sometimes the muscles don't flex and you just kind of stand up there. Strike two is called there. Harkness didn't believe it, but that's okay. He uh, He's a pitcher, and he's got a pretty good eye for things. 3-2 pitch. Let's see if Ellis can come back and get him. Is it the breaking ball? Yes, it is. Harkness hanging tough, fouling it off. Infield at normal depth, back just a little at third. Now uh, coming up is Creasy. He's off the line about 15 feet. Here's the pitch. That one is high, and it'll walk him. And that'll put a runner at first, and I'm sure we'll see a courtesy runner for the pitcher, although some teams do let their pitchers run the bases, and Harkness must be a good base runner because he's going to stay in there. Carson Funk, the catcher, he's a senior. He's 0 for 1. That one outside. This looks a little bit like the first inning on these last two batters where Ellis, he, he worked well to the first hitter in this inning and then has struggled with both these batters. And the runner will advance. That one was behind the hitter. So you got a runner in scoring position. It's thrown away, but you had good backup. And the ball didn't go far enough away for the runner to advance. I'll tell you, Austin Kelly's number one the shortstop. He hustled along with the center fielder, Easton Jones, to get that one. Two ball pitch misses, and uh, pitch count starts to mount, 66 pitches. That's a little over 15 per inning. We're in the top of the fourth. Wind blowing straight out right now. Carson Funk, the hitter. And Funk has walked. 
And so you got two straight bases on balls. And, you know, there was a great Hall of Fame pitcher, Dizzy Dean, that said, oh, those bases on balls. And they will run for Funk. And we'll try to pick up the base runner that's come in for him. While Chase McLean talks and tries to settle down his veteran pitcher there. Looks like Thornell running for Funk. Now, I could be wrong, and I apologize if I am. There will be some strategy sessions here for the Rebel team also, Tipton Rosemark. And the umpire say, gosh, guys, we we can't exchange phone number stuff. Let's finish talking it over. Chase McLean, the head coach, has left the mound. 17, the left-handed hitting Connor Val, who caught a line drive to end the inning. And it was tattooed, or at least it was an out in that inning. They could try the pickoff move. But getting back very easily was Harkness. Thornell is at first base running for Funk while he puts the catching equipment on. Only one out. Jackson Christian looking for the double play. There's the breaking ball blocked. And uh, having trouble finding the plate right now is Carter Ellis, or at least the strikes on the plate. This is Connor Val, who's 0 for 1, struck out, and then had to be thrown out as the ball got away from the catcher. One ball, no strike. Two runners on. Just missing, and it's 2 and 0. And we'll try to check and see. I see the top of a hat, so there it looks like there is activity in the Jackson Christian bullpen. You can only see the tops of people. Uh, down there, it's below the dugout level. 2-0 pitch, swinging strike, and Val saw one he liked. And he had a nice swing but fouled it off. 2-1. and one. Scoots in a little more on the plate. And of course, the white line is gone, so you can really crowd that plate when you're left-handed hitter. Good shot from center field. Watch the action. That one's low, and that runs it to three and one. There are some coaches that will run. I don't know that the Tipton Rose mark, because you don't want to run yourself out of an inning. It's only one out. Got a good left-handed stick up here at the plate. And that's a base hit. It's going to get down. Let's see if they – and they're going to wave him in. And Jackson Christian is going to throw the cutoff. And there's the second out. There's the third out. The run did score, though. And so we'll try to recap it for you. One run did score. So you've got Val, who was thrown out at second. And you have got, I believe, Thornell that was thrown out at third with the relay. And it's 4-2 after three and one-half innings of play. Jackson Christian with the lead. Let's take a timeout. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state-of-the-art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all. This is not your typical car dealer ad. You usually see words like this and numbers like this. I'm not doing it. We have discounts. We have special interest rates, just like everybody else. What they don't have is me. 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 Buy your next vehicle where you feel comfortable, and that's with us. Visit online for savings and rates. You should already be here. And a pitching change will pick it up. It looks like number 10, which would be Jackson Fullen. 
And, of course, the Fullen family, there are a lot of athletes from the Fullen family that goes to Tipton Rosemark that can play football and basketball, too. But Jackson Fullen on. We'll try to close the book for you on Harkness. Harkness went three innings, gave up seven hits, four runs, earned runs was three, walked two, and struck out four. Officially, that closes the book on him. 69 pitches, 45 strikes, faced 19 batters. And this is Jackson Fullen now pitching. And I've got to remember, instead of Xing out, to go out and Fullen on to pitch. Harkness has moved to second. Allen's at first. Pinner's still at short. Bow. Outfield is Scott, West, and Redmond. And stepping into the plate, J.T. Mullins walked his first time, walked his second time. So officially, he is 0 for 0 here in the fourth, coming into the fourth. 4-2 lead by Jackson Christian. They have four runs, seven hits, one error, two runs, three hits, and one error for Tipton Rosemark. And I'm trying to get my book up to date, as you can see on the scoreboard here. It's a two-ball count. To the left-handed hitting J.T. Mullins. Jackson Christian would love to get him on base. And there's a strike, 2-1. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled off. It's a 2-2 count now with no outs. We're in the bottom of the fourth with your leadoff man for the fourth inning, J.T. Mullins. Of course, JT just a junior. Came into the game hitting 333, and so far he's still hitting 333. There's the breaking ball outside. It's 3 2. JT's got a really good eye. I think that several scouting services has him, or at least on the watch list. Here's the pitch. Again, fouled off to the left. JT wanted that pitch back. He would have liked to have had another shot at it. Jackson Fullen, Fullen on the mound. He's thrown five pitches so far. And he walks him. And JT has a perfect day today as far as walking and stuff. He's walked three times. So officially, his 0 for 0 hitting today. And that brings up a very strong young man in Zach Creasy who was on with an error in the first. He had a sacrifice fly, so officially he is 0 for 1. Let's see if JT's running. Hasn't reached the edge of the cutout where I know he'd like to be. It's like he's got a little weight towards the back, and he is not running. Nice pitch. Took a little off of it to the inside. Creasy said, I don't want that one, but I'll look your next one over. No ball, one strike count with no outs and a runner on first. Keep your eye on JT. He's not running. At Creasy wanted to go after it, wisely laid off of it. It's ball one. Infields at double play depth. Looks like the second baseman will be covering if there's an attempted steal. Outfield straight away. Third baseman has come up on the edge of the grass. Fulling. Thought the same idea I had that this might be the pitch. He goes to first. Good, well-played ball game, and even though it was 6 nothing yesterday, it was much tighter game than that. A three spot by Jackson Christian in the late part of the middle innings. Here's the runner going through. The peg through and um, had a little trouble getting it out. And I'm going to tell you what, Funk came out of there ready to throw somebody out. But it's stuck. Sometimes it does. It's uh, 
the mitts, of course, the best mitt, but you don't have as much defensive coverage as those old mitts with the uh, kind of spot right in the center. But the break-in mitt is much better for picking up balls thrown in the dirt and reaching out and grabbing. One and two the count. Fouled off. Breaking ball stayed a little high. Creasy got out in front of it. And Coach started to go after it. One of the players said, Coach, I'll run and get it. And so he did, and we're ready to play baseball. One and two count. Runner on second. No outs in the inning. Jackson Fullen pitching. It's high, and it'll make it 2-2. Two -two. That's one of those where some of the people hold their breath because it's high and a little tight. And that's one of those that the release points a little high and you don't mean for it to be there because you sure want to strike. Now you got a 2-2 count. Puts Creasy in a much better position. Breaking ball hit to the third baseman. He gets the big hop. They throw to first and they throw across but standing up but they dropped it anyway. Well, look at the umpire hustle down there to call him safe. You got to like that. Runner at third is J.T. Mullins. Creasy grounds out third base to first. That's Val throwing over to the first baseman for the first out of the inning. But you got a potential run 90 feet away with Easton Jones striding to the plate and Carson Holt on deck. Easton slightly open stance. You see that front foot a little bit towards third. He'll step towards the pitcher. That pitch gets away, but not far enough to come in. Good base running down JT well in foul territory. Easton's slugging percentage is 621. He's got eight RBIs on the season. Appreciate our coaching staff getting all these nice things. There's a nice pitch by Fullen. Evans counted one and one with one out and a runner at third. Uh, the Jackson Christian coaching staff really works hard. Chase is a master of stats and things like that. Great coach, too. Ready for the 1-1 one -one pitch from Fullen. Oh, a swinging strike. And I'm going to tell you what, when uh, Easton gets a rip, he takes a good one at it. He makes a connection, and we may be chasing the baseball over on Bent Creek, which is the street beyond the trees of the football field. One-two pitch on the way, and it's a swinging strike three. So that helps the Tipton Rosemark cause a little bit because the runner's there with two outs. Of course, pass ball, error, base hit, still gets that run in. Here comes Carson Holt, who is one for two today, had a big double the last time. Jackson Christian could use a big double. Tipton Rosemark wanting the out here. Third baseman a little step closer to the line than he was the last time. But that one got over his head. Here's one drill. It'll get through for the base hit. It'll score the run. Carson Holt, who is going to go play college baseball, the senior drives in the run with a single. And gives a little bit of a cushion back because every time Jackson Christian gets three runs ahead, Tipton Rosemark has come back with a single run in an inning. Austin Kelly, the shortstop up there, one for two on the day, had a hit in the first. Holt running for himself this time. Not a big lead, not a speedster. Nice swing, but swung through that one. It's a no ball, one strike count. Two outs in the inning, a runner at first. Fullen comes to the plate. The curveball is high. He wanted it, but it did not break when he wanted to. Release point may be a little high. His coaches, I'm sure, will point that out to him. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch ready to come. Taking a little longer. Here it comes to the plate. Got under it. Austin did more than he wanted to, sending the left fielder back, back, back. And we need a new baseball, Mr. Wilson. That one just kept going. A two-run shot for Austin Kelly. 
And like I said, I think Mr. Wilson, Wilson makes baseballs. And that puts a little cushion back into the game. A home run for Austin Kelly. He's two for three today. I thought he had gotten under it more than he wanted to. But Austin is a strong young man. Got strong wrist. That's also a reason why he can throw that baseball or football like he does. Coming up to the plate, wearing number 11 to hit for Hastings is Jack Collins, the speedster. And we'll, Jack's one of those guys, you love him. He can do a lot of things, I think. There's one hit on the ground. Will it get through? In the, short, uh, the second baseman ranges over. That's Harkness. And he'll go to first with it for the third out. But Jackson Christian comes up with three big runs and pushes the lead out to 7-2. Let's take a timeout on the Jackson Christian Worthy Road Studio Facebook Network. Dynamics Physical Therapy, your elite provider in sports medicine and performance. Now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. Great American Sports makes sports an addiction. Located at 125B Old Hickory Boulevard, East in Jackson, we specialize in teen sports for youth leagues, schools, and churches. We can embroider and screen print team uniforms. We also have sports equipment, Under Armour, and Adidas clothing, and anything else you need for your team sports. You can email or call us for all your team sports needs. Great American Sports. Make sports an addiction. We are back for the top of the fifth. Carter Ellis has thrown 73 pitches, 40 of them for strikes. He's faced 17 batters. He does have two wild pitches. He's allowed three hits, two runs. One of those runs was earned. Four base on balls and five strikeouts. And that is his book. He is still out there. And he will face Adam Redman, who also led off the fourth. And I take that back. Adam actually led off the third because Petrowski led off the fourth. But Redmond is 0 for 1. Here's a tough chance for Creasy. Makes him go back. He kicks it. It's a fair ball. And when I say kicks it, hit off the heel of his glove. And I'm sure they'll score that one a hit. It was going to be a tough chance anyway. I'm going to give the young man a hit. But now those are some of the things that you don't want to happen. And, yes, they do now score it officially a hit. And that brings up the top of the order. And Trey Scott, who scored, he singled and scored his last time that he was up there. I believe Scott's a junior. He'll be back next year. They always have good clubs just like we do. Young coaches building those programs up. One ball, no strikes, a runner at first. Let's see if the runner's got the itch to go. Actually, he'll go if the coach tells him to go. That one high and outside. Ellis in these later innings has started falling behind again here at Mural Has Field in the count, and that puts a lot of pressure on you as a pitcher. Now, he's worked his way out of it with the help of his team. That one low and it'll be 3-0, and let's see uh, if Trey Scott has the automatic take or if they let him, they'll turn him loose on 3-0. Runner not taking a big lead. There's no use in running on this pitch. And it's a strike. Nice pitch by Carter Ellis. Center fielder and left fielder are in the shade or the shadows. First base just barely out of the shadows as it works its way across the field. Curveball missing. And now there's two runners on with no outs. 
And this is an item. We are in the top of the fifth. These games go seven. Scott can run. Redmond at second. Chase McLean's coming out, and we've had a pitcher warming up, and that will be that will close the book on Carter Ellis. Eli Terry coming on to pitch. And, of course, uh, we had a relief pitcher that finished the game yesterday for the our pitcher, Austin Kelly. Tell you what let's do. Chris, let's give everybody a 30-second timeout while the pitcher warms up. Had an accident and in need of repairs? If you're being towed, make sure the driver knows where to take it. David White Body Shop to expedite the repair process. David White Body Shop has been in business over 42 years. They have factory trained certified technicians and they are a direct repair shop for most insurance companies. They make sure your vehicle is repaired to manufacturer's recommendations. Always insist on the professionals at David White Body Shop. The right-handed pitcher, Eli Terry, comes on to pitch. Let's close the book on Carter Ellis. He threw 79 pitches, 42 strikes, pitched four innings. And let's see, he allowed two runs, one of them earned, and five base on balls, five walks, and two runners on base are his responsibility. So you know he is pulling for his man, Eli Terry. Eli, one of that fine crop of juniors. He's also an outfielder when he's not pitching. Two runs, four hits, one run for Tipton Rosemark. Seven runs, eight hits, one error for Jackson Christian. And a very tough hitter coming up to the plate, Wesley Penner. Now he's 0 for 2, but he was on base back in the first inning. Penner, tough right-handed hitter. Got under that one a little bit, down, and it was lower off his bat, fouled off directly over the screen. We've got a nice screen, so if it gets over that, you fouled it off pretty high. No ball, one strike pitch, not ready to come because – Eli has stepped back. Interesting setup. Green in at first base on the grass. If they bunt, he's covering. I think that one got him just glanced off the helmet. So Pinner hit batsman will go to first. Scott will go to second. Redmond at third. And now with no outs, a serious challenge has mounted from the Tipton Rosemark Rebels, and a wise Zach Creasy walks in to talk to his pitcher. Probably said something like, you just throw strikes, we'll back you up, we'll field it. Let's see what the philosophy is. Short and second at double play. Everybody's at double play depth, and Jackson Christian willing to give up a run for an out or two outs in the case of the double play. Kate Allen, who's a good hitter up there, had a single last time. He blasts one to right field. They'll be tagging. Here's the throw to Green. Green didn't get it cleanly, and a run will score on a sack fly to right field. But uh, I thought for a moment we were fixing to have a bang-bang play at the plate. So one out. Mullins in right field, got it in quick. We just didn't make it clean here. So one out. And another very good hitter in Eli West up there, the senior center fielder. They go to first with it and get the man diving back because you know that 
with it first and third and only one out that Tipton Rosemark wants to check the Eagles out and see if they're going to throw through. And again, the quick turn to first. 7-3, your score, four-run lead for the Eagles. West, very patient up at the plate, has stood in there a long time this time. Here's the pitch to the plate. Going for the downs on it was West, and he missed it, strike one. Outfield straight away, and you've got some good speed in the outfield right now and there the runner faked they've got him picked off now you got to keep an eye on the runner on third so he can't score and he's he's going to have a good chance of scoring because the ball was thrown low and hit the dirt and we'll try to get the we'll score that run but there are two outs redmond has already scored in this inning trey scott did and uh they picked off the runner. That brings the Rebels, though, to within three, two outs in the inning. And West at the plate with nobody on. Some great action there. Swinging strike two. Crowd has really stayed glued to their seats in this contest. 0-2 pitch from Terry on the way, just missing. Got a little low, I guess, because the catcher had to dig it out, but across the plate, it was just too low to be a strike. One ball, two strikes. Eli Terry would really love to have this batter. Here's the pitch. Popped up, getting out of play, foul down the left field line. Jack Collins gave chase to it. And knowing Jack and the way he played football, if you could run through the fence, Jack would have run through the fence and gone after that one. Nice shot of the home plate area and our dugout. Still one and two, two outs. Let's see what the coaching staff has called for Terry to throw. That one high, release point a little high, and it's two and two. You got a two ball, two strike, two out count. The batter is West for Tipton Rosemark, who every time Jackson Christian gets ahead, they creep back in. Here's one for Creasy, and this one has got to be an error off his glove. And I don't know, they have not given a sign yet, but I am going to go ahead and score it as an error. Doesn't matter. They don't care at Tipton Rosemark. They just want base runners. Now that brings up Petrowski, who has walked and grounded out. And the umpire says no, that he didn't go around. So it's a one ball count. Based on balls and errors will get you in trouble. And they did score it an error. There's one right there. That one got that outside corner of the plate. Petrowski, the DH. Front foot up in front of the plate just a little. They're running, and the ball was low anyway. And rounding the base was West, and West is a good enough athlete. He thought about third, but hustling over with Smith, the catcher. Two one count, a runner in scoring position, a good hitter up there, the number five man, the senior Aiden Petrowski. And a strike. Boy, that one had a little that was one of those Von Ryan expresses there to even the count it. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, a runner at second. Infield at normal depth. Just missing high, and it's 3-2. You know that everybody that wears blue and supports the blue wanted that one, and everybody that is a Tipton Rosemark supporter said, 
Wow, you good. Just a little high. Two outs. A runner on second. The three-two pitch from Terry. He checks the runner. It's on the way. Fouled off, and we'll do it again. And somebody made a nice catch in the dugout over there off the screen. On deck batter will keep up with the baseball to give to the umpire. That's Harkness, Hunter Harkness on deck. We'll do the three two pitch again with two outs. Here comes Terry to the plate and reaching out and saving himself. Good job by Petrowski to stay up at the plate because that one had the edge of the plate written all over it. Green was moving to go get it, but it's foul. So we'll do it. I have a friend that's not good English that is on radio with me. He says, one more again, but that's that's one of his catchphrases. The 3-2 pitch. Terry eyeing home plate. Here it comes, and they say it just missed. It may have missed by a millimicron. Doesn't matter. Now you've got runners on first and second. Harkness. Coming up to the plate, he scored once. He's 0 for 1. Hunter Harkness, who started this game and was relieved by Jackson Fullen. Terry trying to work out of a fourth inning jam. The original two runs belong to Carter Ellis. This one drilled. It may get down, and it is going to get down. Over Collins' head, who's speedy. One run coming to the plate. Two runs streaking towards the plate. And then the runner falls down and has to come back. Austin Kelly wisely runs it in. But walks and errors will get you in trouble. And that has happened here in Jackson Christian School's case. And uh, Hunter Harkness comes up with a big two-out double. And they could tie this up with a base hit. And that brings up Carson Funk, the catcher. 0 for 2, but a very strong young man. Two outs. Just missing. The pitches are close, but they are missing. And we've still got two and a half more innings of baseball to go. Interesting contest. That one a strike. One and one the count. Runners at second and third, two outs. They'll be going with the ping of the bat. Still think it sounds better to say crack of the bat. Terry checks the runner at third, comes to the plate, the curveball, got it for strike two. And that was a dandy curve right there. Get that good shot, and you see Hunter Harkness getting his lead. He just helped his own cause. It would be a 7-6 ball game, but the runner slipped down at third. Here's the pitch. Took a little off of it. It's outside. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Two runners on. The deuces are wild, as they say, and at a minor league ballpark, they'd have that little bell, and they'd ding the bell. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two runners on. Those runners are both in scoring position. One at second, one at third. Harkness at second, Petrowski at third. This is the pitch that Terry really wants to get him on. Doesn't want to run it to 3-2, even though there's no merry-go-round situation. Swinging strike. They'll have to throw him out. They do it first, and the inning is over. But for Jackson Christian, a disastrous inning, a good inning, for the Rebels as they pick up four big runs in that inning and get back to within two. 
Jackson Christian leads 7-5 going into the bottom of the fifth. Let's take a timeout on Worthy Road. Whether you're relocating into Jackson or just wanting something new and different, call Kenny Sutherland with Five Star Real Estate Services. He can help make your dreams become a reality. With over 20 years experience and helping over 1,000 families with their new home purchases, there's a reason that he is your new construction expert and home buying specialist. Call Kenny today direct at 731 731- 444-1164 or 731-661-9000. This is Lee Johnson. And this is Jason Lockridge from Southern Capital Advisors. We're thankful for the Jackson Christian family and are honored to help lay a foundation that will build our community for years to come. Welcome to Southern Capital Field and go Eagles. We are back in a beautiful day contest, a very interesting contest. Some walks and errors and some mishandles on some relays and different things, a runner falling down. So a lot of interesting elements to this contest. Seven runs, eight hits, and two official errors on batted balls, but there were some errors on some other plays on some throws and some catches and stuff that wouldn't show up that way, but it'll show up later when the coaches get together. Five runs, five hits, and one error for Tipton Rosemark. And uh, we'll check. And those first two runs were the – ownership of Carter Ellis, and we'll get you his final totals a little later. Jackson Christian comes up in the bottom of the fifth. Eli Smith, who's two for two, the catcher, will lead off. He'll be followed by Daniel Green, who's one for one, and then Reed Cooper, the leadoff man, who has a big hit back in the second inning. Jackson's pitch popped up. They look it over. This one's going to stay in play. And Fullen gloves that one easily. One pitch, one out. So that kind of puts a premium on pitches. You don't have to get that. Daniel Green, it was about this time yesterday that I think he lost one. Some people say it went 380 feet. I don't know if they even found it. Here's the pitch to Green, and it's low. And ball two, low. This is Jackson Fullen on the mound. He has looked good so far. He's thrown 23 pitches in part of the fourth and this inning, or actually the fourth. Dribbler down the line in foul. Green will come back to the plate. Has a two ball, one strike count with one out. Jackson Christian would love to push this lead back out as in the top of the fifth, Tipton Rosemark got a three spot. Good shot of the pitcher Fullen and Green. It comes inside, 3-0 or 3-1, pardon me for the horrible mistake I just made there. Nice shot from center field on the 3-1 pitch. It's ball four and Daniel Green. Now they may pinch run for Green here. We'll see. Although Daniel can run. And he walks. They're going to let him run for himself. Reed Cooper, who can handle the bat and in the past, but there's two out. Now, let's see. It looks like a courtesy runner or a pinch runner is going to appear, and you have the reentry rule. I think they've got the pinch runner is down warming up. So they're not going to pinch run because he is warming up. Daniel Green will run for himself. (laughs) 
Pulling out of the stretch, the curveball and a dandy one. That one broke well, Reed Cooper. And like I said, don't think he's bunting, but this young man can bunt for a base hit. He's not just a sacrifice punt type guy. 0-1 pitch with Green at first. Fullen looks, comes to the plate, swinging strike, and that's that one up about shoulder level. It looks big as a beach ball coming up there, but sometimes a very hard pitch to hit. In the hole now having to guard the plate is Reed Cooper. One for three on the day. Outfield and everybody straight away, double play depth for the Tipton Rosemark team, the curveball, and they're going to ring him up. I thought it was close and I couldn't call it, but they say it is a strikeout for the second out of the inning. J.T. Mullins, who has walked all three plate appearances up there, J.T. would love to have. Now they bring the pinch runner in. And we'll have to pick up and see who is coming in. Maybe Cole Vargas, and I don't know. We'll check. Cole has done some. It is number four, Cole Vargas. Cole is also a threat to steal. Cole is also one of our pitchers, so he probably was warming up down the line. Crowding the plate a little bit is J.T. Mullins with two outs and Vargas on first. Low and away. One ball count. They would love to get Vargas into scoring position. With two outs, that pretty well takes the bunt unless you're going to bunt for a hit, possibly down that third baseline. you got to make the third baseman field it uh, far enough away that the pitcher can't spring off the mound and get it. They're not bunting, and I don't blame you because with JT, he's a good enough hitter. It's one and one as he fouls that one off to the left. I guarantee you Coach McLean and the Jackson Christian fans will just take him getting on base and having runners at first and second. But right now it's a 1-1 count to JT Mullins hitting 333. Vargason at first. Not a big lead. This one popped up in the air. Now, shortstop will have to take charge, and he does it. Penner does a good job and um, pops out to the short. And Jackson Christian is retired. They did not score in that inning. First inning they have not scored in. 7-5 at the end of five. Let's take a timeout on the Jackson Christian Worthy Road Facebook Network. Buy a car in your bikini. Buy a truck in your jammies. Buy an SUV in your, well, <laughs> no matter what you're wearing or not, shop JonesChevroletHumboldt.com with the area's largest used car inventory. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. No matter where you are, you can shop 24-7 at Humboldt Dodge Chrysler Jeep.com with the area's largest used car inventory. The best thing to order is when you are sitting at soccer practice, order it through your phone while you're sitting there, and then you go and pick it up. But you're much more of a planner than me. I am. And that's what I love about you. Yes. You know, I'm not that prepared. It's more seat in my pants. Braden Wilbanks comes on to try to wrap this one up. He had to, or I don't want to say he had to, but he came on yesterday. Wilbanks did and pitched the last inning of a 6 nothing win. Austin Kelly started and went until Wilbanks came in and finished the game up. Wilbanks will have to hold him at bay for two innings here. And it looks like the third baseman, Connor Val, will lead off. Val one for two on the day. A little delay in the game. Umpire is ready to step in. Pitcher and hitter were ready. Here's the pitch. And that one low and gets by the catcher. And the last thing that Jackson Christian wants is to put anybody on because walks, some well-placed hits by Tipton Rosemark, but some walks 
and errors have really hurt Jackson Christian. There's a swinging strike, and that was placed at the right place. You want to throw left-handed hitters most of the time low and inside, right at those knees, a very, according to the great last 400 hitter, Ted Williams, a tough place for lefties to hit. That one high and outside. I switch hit some, and I know I didn't like that pitch there. I need to ask a good friend of mine, Steve Farrow, who was a great hitter, if he liked it there. And again, another ball, and that one outside, like kind of like the release point was letting. It's three one count. After Val Redmond, the center fielder, will be on. There is one down Main Street, so runs it to three two. And to be honest with you, Wilbanks may just have to challenge him and say, guys, I need your help. Here's the pitch. It's inside. and he, No, they said it got the dotted line. I thought it might have been off there. But remember, I'm at an angle. And the umpire, I will give him credit. So Val strikes out for the first out. Redmond, who scored in that last inning, he also singled. A great effort in center field, but Jones couldn't come up with it. And there's a runner on first. Jackson Christian, and the tough man to double up will be Trey Scott. Scott plays right field, left-handed hitter. They've got a lot of good left-handed hitting in this lineup. This one fouled off, and Scott was wanting that one. He'd love to have it back. Will Banks threw a good pitch, but Scott wanted it. We may see Redmond running. Breaking ball should be a strike, and it is. 0-2 count on a tough hitter, Trey Scott, the junior. Will Banks gets his sign, checks the runner at first, comes to the plate, it's outside. And I guarantee Eli Smith, the catcher, was ready to uncoil and throw if Redmond had been running. 1-2 pitch, runner on first. His weight has shifted just a little, but he's not running. This one is kind of knuckle in. Will Jack get it? Yes, he does. It started to fly over his head, and it was really it looked like some of my golf shots. For the second out, Jack Collins, great job because that could have been a troublesome hit. Wesley Pinner up there, he scored in that last inning and barely safe getting back. What a move by Will Banks. Will Banks, 10 pitches in the inning. Oh, here's one to Creasy. He comes up with it. Shooting over the first, and there's Daniel Green. Sure-handed Daniel Green gets it. Five to three is what happens there. That's third to first for the third out. And only one man left on base for him. No runs. And the score at the end of five and one-half innings of play, Jackson Christian, seven. And Tipton Rosemark 5, let's take a one-minute timeout on the network. Downtown is thriving, and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. We realize you have a busy lifestyle, and at the Bank of Jackson, we're here to help you fulfill all of your financial needs personal and business loans, mortgages, online banking and bill pay, and so much more. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Football is one reason to love fall. Here's another. 
Save up to $16,000 on a fully loaded in-ground pool built this fall. Come by Aloha Custom Pools Massive Showroom on Carriage House Drive in Jackson for full details and see available styles in person. We are back for the bottom of the sixth. And fans, have you ever had one of those days or innings where you feel like that you can almost taste the pollen? There's that much in the air. And uh, I've got a little bit of the sniffles. Now, it looks like there may be a change in the pitching. And this looks like DiBiase, who had been playing some second base, has come in to pitch for the Tipton Rosemark team. I thought Jackson Fullen did a, a great job, and I'm not sure how long they allow him to go at a time. But DiBiase, Jordan DiBiase now pitching. And to step in for Jackson Christian, that should be Zach Creasy, number 24. He has some power. They're playing him straight away. It's low and inside. The trees blocking the sunlight. It's enveloped everybody but the third baseman in the infield. Has the center fielder, left fielder, and the catcher and the hitter and the umpire at the plate are the only ones that's still in the sunlight. There's ball too high, and you can tell that DiBiase has a great arm. Of course, many of you remember there was a great wrestler, Ted DiBiase, at one time, who was a pretty good athlete in other sports. I don't know if there are any kin, but, boy, there's one out in front of it. Zach would love to have it back. And um, he tattooed that one down the third baseline. Two balls, one strike. We're in the bottom of the six. Jackson Christian with a two-run lead. Jordan DiBiase on the mound. The pitch outside, 3-1. The infield for... Them, Allen at first, Harkness at second, Pinner at shortstop, Val at third. Funk doing a good job catching for them, just like Eli Smith for us doing a great job catching. Drill to left field. It's back, 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 back. Kiss it goodbye and then say, Mr. Wilson, we need a new baseball as Zach Creasy has pushed it back out to a three-run lead with a home run. Big hit for Zach and as the coaches and stuff remind him, touch all four, and you see him touch the plate. Gets a big hand from Carson Holt there. Home run for him, and we've seen a few balls fly out of here today. Austin Kelly lost one for us. And coming to the plate after the home run is Easton Jones. Number 22 is one for three today. And a nice pitch, and that was a great spot for a pitcher to throw it. Easton says, I'll wait till I see my pitch. He had it, and he would like to have that one back, too. Got under it a little bit. So it's a no ball, two strike count. Easton, who's one for three today, will have to guard the plate here. To kick the pitch, staying up at the plate by fouling it off out of play on the right field side is Easton Jones. Good battle between DiBiase and Jones here. Still an 0-2 count. It's a great day for baseball. The swinging strike three took a little off the curveball, and Easton has struck out. First out in the inning. Here comes a man that's capable of losing the baseball, and that being Carson Holt. Very strong young man. Great pitcher when he is healthy. He can also do like Daniel Green. He could even play a little first base when healthy. Curveball in there. That one a late breaker, but it was a strike. So it's 0-1 to the designated hitter, Carson Holt. That one is low and inside. Holt has had a couple of hits today, one of them a double, one of them a single. He is two for three. That was DiBiase's 10th pitch of the inning. The 11th one is a ball, and it's two and one. 
And usually Carson has a very good eye up there. His sister is the first baseman on the softball team and plays basketball. His mom, one of the greatest three-point shooters in Northside history. There's the breaking ball for strike two. And again, that one, you think it's not a strike and it breaks a little late. Good pitch by DBS. 2-2 two -two count on a very good athlete, Carson Holt. Here's the pitch. Hit on the ground and foul. That one was hit with authority. Todd Lumley, the first base coach for Jackson Christian, uh, gets to do a little T-berry shuffle or a little dance down there, missing it. Umpire grins about it. It's a good umpiring crew today. They've, they've done an excellent job. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. Just missing it. It'll run it 3-2. And I've been in that position before. You block it. Sometimes it gets away from you and you have a hard time finding it. Everybody out there is giving you instructions, and instead of telling you the ball's to your right, they say it's to, it's to our right, and uh, well, that's the way it goes sometimes. Walks and Holt, I told you, has a good eye. Now, this is not what they wanted out of Tipton Rosemark. They didn't want to put any runners on. And going to first, and they may, let's see if we get a courtesy runner or actually a runner. It won't be a courtesy runner. It'll, you have re-entry, and uh, they got to get him into the ball game. Now, that looks like Brody Bennett. I will have to double-check it. Bennett wears number 17. That looks like number 17. He's a freshman infielder. And the umpire getting it checked in the proper way. you got to write it on your little card that the umpire has. Which also means that Austin Kelly, who had a home run his last time up, I believe that was a two-run shot, and helped with a different matter of fact, for till this last run scored on Zach Creasy's home run, it was the difference in the ball game. I like what DiBiase's doing while they're making this Change, he's keeping his arm loose with his third baseman, Val. And again, you've got two young coaching staffs that are very good. Cole and Brad Smith, Jacob Cole, they kind of co-coach or co-manage this team. Chase McLean, our head coach. Of course, we have a fine staff with Todd Lumley, also Brian Bullard, Carter Holt, and Colin Cantrell. Talking with Colin a little bit before the game. And stepping in is Austin Kelly, the fine shortstop and pitcher for Jackson Christian. He looks at a good pitch, but that wasn't the one he wanted. Kelly two for three today. DiBiase has thrown 16 pitches. Runner at first with one out. A little deep in left field, straight away, all the way around. That one outside. Infields at double play depth. Double play gets Tipton Rosemark out of this inning. Base hit or anything keeps it going other than even in one out. Fouled off, and that one, Austin says, I would love to have that one back. Great quarterback, reads defense as well. Probably could have been a great basketball player, but he concentrates on the football and the baseball. Here's the pitch. It's going to get away in the threat of a double play other than a line drive or some type of throw them out thing as Bennett has advanced to second, putting a runner in scoring position. Now Austin... He'd love to have another home run. He'd just like a base hit that would bring that other run in and give a little more insurance. Remember, there's only one out in the inning. DBIC taking a hard look at left field and the scoreboard. He'll tow the pitching rubber to get his sign. Checks that runner. Comes to the plate. Breaking ball actually took it out of the strike zone then. And Carson Funk with a great stop right there. 
Remind you, this is a copyright broadcast. It will also be archived on Worthy Road's YouTube page for further broadcasting. And uh, the pitcher calls timeout. And while he's doing that, we'll remind you any rebroadcast, retransmission, or further use of this contest without the express written consent of Worthy Road Studios is prohibited. We want to thank both schools, the coaching staffs for rosters, and Chase McLean and his staff for some great information that they always come up with. Chase fixes my spotting charts for me in football. Here's the pitch. Swinging strike, and Austin was going for the downs on that one. So there are two outs via the strikeout. And coming up to the plate is Jack Collins. He's in for Hastings. He's also done some pinch running, a tough left-handed hitter. If he can get it on the ground, I don't think he'll be bunting in this situation. But if it was a different situation, we'll listen to it. Well, he was. And if he had got that one down, they weren't going to catch the speedy Jack Collins. And a good idea, it would have caught everybody off guard. The pitcher would have been the only one. And Jack just didn't get all of it. A one-strike count with a runner at second. The breaking ball just missing. And you got to remember, Jack's strike zone is not as big as some of the big guys. And you have to throw your breaking ball so it'll be a strike to the smaller players. One and one pitch on the way. Outside and low. Two one the count, two outs. Ball hits the bat, and the runner at second will be digging for the exits or a really home plate. Bennett down there. Brody Bennett. It's good to see freshmen get a chance to play a little bit. There's the breaking ball, and Jack has to kind of turn. Three balls, one strike to the speeding Jack Collins, who plays left field here in the later innings. Everybody straight away. Shortstop Pinner doing a lot of the holding on of the runner at second. He'll break away. Watch him if you get that shot. It's ball four. Jack Collins has worked a walk. And there are runners at first and second. Two outs. And approaching the plate is the catcher, Eli Smith. Eli's had a good day today, two for three. Eli just a sophomore, so he'll be there where he can catch for a couple of years more for Jackson Christian. DiBiase checks the runner, comes to the plate with it, and it is a strike over that outside corner. That's one of those that Smith would have had to take it to right field to have gotten anything out of it. So he chooses to work on the next pitch. No ball, one strike count with two runners on, two outs in the inning. DiBiase coming to the plate. He's outside. Daniel Green, the big first baseman, is on deck. DiBiase really wants this hitter. He does not want to face green. Here's the pitch. It's outside. Be 2-1. Now, did I make it sound like green is invincible? I hope not. He can get out just like him. He's also capable of losing the baseball for you, too. Ready for the 2-1 pitch. DiBiase to the plate. It's a little high. 3-1, do they give him the green light, a caution, or do they make him take? Let's see what's on. Runners get their leads. DiBiase checks the runner at second, comes to the plate, swinging, strike two. So the merry-go-round will be begin with the release of the baseball, or actually as he goes into motion towards the plate, the runners will be streaking for the exits, as I like to say. Smith, the hitter, they step back to try to drive that runner. Nobody really holding on. 
You got Pinner deep in the hole at short to try to cut the runoff. Third baseman's only about nine feet off of the line. They're running. Here's one on the ground. Pinner's got to come up. He'll have to go to first. He bobbles it, and the bases are jammed. And just barely getting back under is the runner. Took the big turn, and they threw behind him. So Smith on with the error. Runners at all bases now. And DiBiase, a good pitcher, and they're going to come out and check with him and talk to him. Let's see what's up because you don't want to make a mistake with Green. And like I said, yes, he can make outs, and he does make outs, but all it takes is one mistake pitch. And this big fellow who's going to be a star at UTC, I believe, as a tight end, can lose a baseball for you. He might even hit the uh, scoreboard message board down at the football field, or better yet, he may hit one over on Bent Creek Lane. And uh, that's a distance. He's capable. And this is a wise decision. You can tell it's a good coaching staff. Are they going to make some changes? One coach talking to the pitcher, one to the umpire. Daniel Green at the plate. Morrow running at first base, so you've got Bennett at third, Collins at second, Morrow at third. There are two outs. The bases are jammed. Ducks on the pond, if you prefer that term. Outfield has backed up a couple of steps, especially in right and left. Center only about one or two. DiBiase to face Daniel Green. Green one for one today. That one is missing outside. Green had a sacrifice fly that was, or bunt, actually it was a dandy bunt for a big man. DiBiase comes to the plate with it. That one a strike. Close, but I'll defer to the umpire. One and one. Two outs. Faces jammed. Here's the pitch. It's hit to right field. Will it be deep enough? No, it gets down. One run has crossed the plate. Two is streaking for the plate. It's cut off, and Daniel Green comes through with a two RBI single. And it is 10 to five, which gives a little more cushion to Jackson Christian. There'll be runners at first and second. And green two for two officially today. And that brings up the top of the order, Reed Cooper here in the six. Cooper one for four. Hits one to right field, but will it stay up in the air? And yes, it does for the third out. So he flies out to right field, but not before. There are three big runs put on that board. And Jackson Christian leads 10 to 5 over Tipton Rosemark. Let's take a one-minute timeout. Buy a car in your bikini. Buy a truck in your jammies. Buy an SUV in your, well, <laughs> no matter what you're wearing or not. Shop JonesChevroletHumboldt.com with the area's largest used car inventory. New Nissans are rolling in. Over 70 new Nissans to choose from. That means special incentives, 0% financing up to 60 months, and invoice pricing so you pay what we pay. Plus over 70 pre-owned units. Something for everyone. Certified pre-owned too. Luxury vehicles, BMW, Lexus, Alfa Romeo, and much more at Carlock Prestige. Check out all we have to offer at CarlockNissanOfJackson.com. You should already be here. In a fine contest today going into the top of the seventh with a five-run lead, Brayton Wilbanks will try to tack down the win here. He uh, gave up only one hit 
and struck out one in that previous inning work. He's on in relief. And three big runs for the Eagles in the bottom of the six. Ten runs, 11 hits, three errors for Jackson Christian. Five runs, five hits, and two errors for Tipton Rosemark. For Tipton Rosemark, leading off is the first baseman, Cade Allen. Cade even, his front foot even with the front of the plate. Outfield a little deeper. Creasy off the line uh, quite a bit still. It is a one-strike pitch, as you saw. Allen one for three on the day. Here's Will Banks' pitch. It's high. He'll watch the film and say, hey, my release point was a little high on that one. He'll get it. So he's a good young reliever here. I think he's got the nerves of steel. I've, we saw him relieve some last year, too. Comes in. That one a little low. Braden Wilbanks, just a junior, another one of those fine juniors for this team. Behind in the count, 2-1. Now behind 3-1. You don't want to get Allen on. Now, I've only got him one for two. The official scored him one for – he had a sacrifice, so it's one for two. Here's one on the ground to Austin Kelly. Kelly, crow hop step over to first, the stretch by Green, and there's one out in the inning. Brings up Eli West. Where's number one, the right-handed hitting center fielder. Scored a run back in the fifth. He was on with an error by the third baseman. One away, and again, normal depth for everybody. Pitch a little low, speed in the outfield. Mullins in right, Jones in center, and Collins in left. An infield of green, Cooper, Kelly, and Creasy. Will Banks pitches out of the stretch, and that one is high for ball two. Catcher is Eli Smith. Really wants a strike here and gets one. You can see the umpire's hand right there. Great shots by our camera crew. This one hit out in the outfield. It's going to turn back around, and this one looks like it is gone. And, again, Mr. Wilson, we need a new baseball, and I told you Eli West could hit. And he gets the home run. It cuts the lead to 10-6. to six. They won't put it up there officially until he touches all the bases. This is why that cushion is so important because now it's only a four-run difference. Combination of hits, walks, errors, and runs are scoring. Could tie it up with four. You could get the bases loaded and somebody hit a grand slam. There's all kinds of ways. This game is not over, as Yogi would say, Yogi Bear, until it's over. There's a curveball and a good one, too. Look, it may have even been a slider. Did not get a good look at it. 22 pitches for Will Banks. And I'm sure he would love to have that pitch back. Not that one, but the, the two he's thrown are great, the one that the home run went out on. So it's an 0-2 count here to Aiden Petrowski, the designated hitter, who's 0-for-1 officially. Breaking ball stayed high that time. It's one and two. An industrious spider decided he'd sit up here on the window of our press box here. Breaking ball fouled off. Staying alive is Petrowski. That boy just don't quit. He was rebuilding it. He ran up to the top and said, I'm going to build another one. We ended that. Here's the one-two pitch. Oh, a scorcher. Creasy comes up with it. Shoots across the first. Sure hands Daniel Green comes up with it, and there are two outs. Score that one five to three. Third baseman to first for the second out. And Hunter Harkness, who helped himself out, he scored a run in the game, had a big double. Hunter Harkness, a right-handed hitter, started the game pitching for Tipton Rosemark. We're in the top of the seventh with two outs. 
And that's a good pitch for a strike. Harkness one for two officially. A little breaking ball for strike two. 0 oh, 2 pitch. Do you throw the waste pitch or you go after him and rub the hitter out here or attempt to rub him out? Good hitter at the plate. Two outs. 0 oh, 2 pitch on the way. And they tag him out. And that is a strikeout and the end of the ball game. Ten runs, nine hits. And I have three errors officially. Scoreboard only shows two. And six runs, six hits, two errors for Tipton Rosemark. Jackson Christian wins both contests this year and helps themselves in the district. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick time out here. And when we come back, we'll wrap this contest up. You trade in your car. You trade in your house. So why not get some equity back from your old HVAC system? McCoy's Heating and Air will now give you up to $2,000 trade-in for your old unit, plus a free 10-year parts and labor warranty with the purchase of a qualifying York system. That's right. Trade in your old unit and get up to $2,000, plus a free 10-year parts and labor warranty. For a limited time, only from McCoy's Heating and Air. It's the off-season, but it's the best season to buy at Aloha Custom Pools. Snag your dream pool now, and we promise you'll be splashing around by Memorial Day. What are you waiting for? Give us a call or visit us at alohacustompools.com. Why go on vacation when you can live on vacation? Aloha Custom Pools will help you create your very own piece of paradise, and you can enjoy it every day. What are you waiting for? Take the plunge. Call Aloha Custom Pools or visit us online. The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios. With over 750,000 views in 2022, we are where you need to advertise. Please subscribe to our Worthy Road Studios YouTube channel and join the other 4,000 subscribers watching local sports. The Jackson Rockabillies, Union and Bethel Universities, USJ, TCA, JCS, and Peabody. Our multi-camera broadcasts include slow motion instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to the sponsors who make it all possible. Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios. The premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee. We are back here. A big win, a district win for Jackson Christian. Last year we split with Tipton Rosemark, and with the tiebreakers it cost us first place. Of course, you still got to factor in Fayette Academy, TCA, and USJ in that. And USJ holds two wins over Trinity Christian Academy. Those games will be very important. Very quickly, Jackson Christian scored in every inning that they got to hit. Of course, they didn't bat in the bottom of the seventh except for the fifth. And uh, Tipton Rosemark came on late but did not score. Wilbank shut it down in the sixth and then gave up a home run in the seventh. But, again, the line score was uh, 10 runs, 11 hits, and three errors for Jackson Christian, six runs, six hits, and two errors for Tipton Rosemark. Uh, Carson Holt had, was two for three today. Austin Kelly, two for four. Daniel Green, two for two. And Eli Smith, the catcher, two for two. And I hope I did not leave anybody out that got two hits. And uh, Holt had a double. Kelly and Creasy with home runs. He had a, the sacrifice fly by Creasy, a sacrifice bunt that went down by our big first baseman. We had some errors that we would like to erase, but they happened. We got to work through them. Nobody had more than one hit by on Tipton Rosemark. Of course, the big hit for them was West home run. Scott had one hit, Allen one hit, Harkness with one hit, Val with one, Redman with one. Tell you what we're going to do, we're going to take a short time out, and when we come back, we will have the official wrap-up of this contest with some other information and tell you when we've got another game. Let's take that time out. Buy a car in your bikini. Buy a truck in your jammies. Buy an SUV in your, well, <laughs> no matter what you're wearing or not. Shop Jones Chevrolet Humboldt.com with the area's largest used car inventory. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. 
the off season, but it's the best season to buy at Aloha Custom Pools. Snag your dream pool now and we promise you'll be splashing around by Memorial Day. What are you waiting for? Give us a call or visit us at alohacustompools.com. Why go on vacation when you can live on vacation? Aloha Custom Pools will help you create your very own piece of paradise and you can enjoy it every day. What are you waiting for? Take the plunge. Call Aloha Custom Pools or visit us online. No matter where you are, You can shop 24-7 at HumboldtDodgeChryslerJeep.com with the area's largest used car inventory. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. You trade in your car. You trade in your house. So why not get some equity back from your old HVAC system? McCoy's Heating and Air will now give you up to $2,000 trade-in for your old unit, plus a free 10-year parts and labor warranty with the purchase of a qualifying York system. That's right, trade in your old unit and get up to $2,000, plus a free 10-year parts and labor warranty. For a limited time, only from McCoy's Heating and Air. We are back, the happy final, Jackson Christian 10, Tipton Rosemark 6, two fine baseball teams, two well-coached teams going at it. We will be back here at, actually, we'll probably take the air about 1240 Friday. It's a 1 o'clock start, and uh, Riverside will be here. Eric Quinn, you know that young man's name. He spent some time over at TCA, so you're familiar with him. And he coaches the Riverside team. They'll be here for a 1 o'clock start, 1240 on the pregame. Uh, give you some pitching stats that you want. Carter Ellis, 79 pitches, 42 of them strikes. Eli Terry, 23 pitches, 14 strikes. Brad Wilbanks, 29 pitches, 19 strikes. Ellis faced 19 hitters. Eli Terry, 6. Brad Wilbanks faced 8. Uh, Ellis, the winning pitcher today, and uh, I would say it got close enough. I'd have to look at my save rules that Wilbanks probably picked up a save there. And for the visitors, Tipton Rose Mark Harkness went three innings, gave up seven hits, four runs, three of them earned, two base on balls, four strikeouts. Fullen came on and gave up three runs. DiBiase finished it, and he gave up three runs for a total of ten. And Harkness threw in 69 pitches, 45 strikes. Fullen, 34 pitches, 21 strikes. DiBiase, 37 pitches, 19 strikes. And that is the way the game ended, 10-6. to 6. And we will be back with more. I want to thank both schools, their administrations, their coaches, for the excellent support and help they gave. And I want to thank the IT man, the technical man here at Jackson Christian School. What a job he did getting us some internet today so you could have this nice ball game. And I guess we are close, Brother Chris, who is my great producer, and we love him to wrap up. And you see his wonderful name up there at the top, and that's where it should be, Christopher Reason, the director and producer. The executive producer is Paul Schulze. Of course, he is the executive producer of all broadcasts on Worthy Road Studios and the Ball Game Blitz. Paul did the outstanding camera work along with Chris switching. A lot of times we have some stationary cameras too that you don't have to have an operator. He switches them for you to get you those good shots. I'm Coach Joe Holloway, and we will remind you that any rebroadcast, retransmission, or further use of this contest without the express written consent of Worthy Road Studios is prohibited. And we also want to... Thank everybody for listening. Thank our sponsors and say thanks for your time. This time, till next time, see you Friday.
award-winning Ball Game Blitz Sports Network from Worthy Road Studios. Over 750,000 views in 2023. We're where you need to advertise. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and join over 4,500 subscribers watching local sports. The Jackson Rockabillies, Union University, Bethel, USJ, TCA, Jackson Christian, Sacred Heart, and Peabody. Multi-camera broadcasts, slow motion, instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to our sponsors who make it all possible. The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network from Worthy Road Studios. The premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee.